this very special series, uh, Heart Talk. Uh, this is a week dedicated globally to create awareness about congenital heart defects. Uh, and uh, I'm Priyal Guliani, representing Genesis Foundation, who has pioneered uh, as far as uh, creating awareness and supporting families uh, with CHT. The uh, founder uh, trustees of Genesis Foundation, Prema Sagar and Jyoti Sagar, after having lost their child uh, to a heart defect, uh, started this initiative, which was first of its kind in the country, and has also allowed people like me who shared a similar journey of losing uh, their uh, child to come together to spread the message, to create awareness and to support financially as well. Today, we start uh, this very uh, series and conversation with the very genesis of the CHD trajectory. And for that, uh, I'm joined by someone who I am very fond of uh, as a doctor and as a professional uh, who is very passionate, uh, Dr. Glossy Sabarwal. She is a radiologist specializing in fetal uh, care and uh, fetal medicine. Uh, she has many, many accolades to her credit. Uh, thank you, Dr. Glossy, for joining us uh, right now for this very special discussion uh, with regard to creating awareness about congenital heart defects. Thank you so much, Priyal and Genesis Foundation for taking this initiative forward. It's very close to my heart. We have to keep spreading the awareness about it. And that is what we are going to do today. We are going to address the common concerns and make a very clear and simple description for everyone to understand what we need to do when it comes to avoiding and early treatment of congenital heart disease in unborn babies. Absolutely, Glossy. And that's the first thing, you know, when you have such a diagnosis, you then question why me, but there are so many things that you need to be aware of. Like, uh, I believe the prenatal, uh, you know, stage is something that we need to be aware of so many things as far as a woman's health and body is concerned. And as you pointed out, let's start with the basis of, is there a way to prevent? And if there is what it is? So whenever we are talking about pregnancy, we have to understand that as a mother, there are three stages before you get a baby in your lap. So from womb to lap, there are three stages. One is before you actually conceive. That is called the prenatal counseling, the prenatal health. The second stage is during your pregnancy, once you conceive. And the third stage comes right after childbirth. There are a number of things which can uh, increase your risk of having a child with congenital heart disease. Let's talk about those risks which are modifiable and those risks which are not modifiable. Now, if we talk about the not modifiable risk factors, that is the genetic makeup of our bodies. There are several health conditions which are transferred from one or both the parents to the child. Mm. Genetic makeup, you cannot change. There are certain conditions which, for example, there is most commonly, uh, everybody knows about Down syndrome. It's a genetic disorder. It's a trisomy 21 disorder. Now, we know, okay, fine, Down syndrome is one condition. But do we know that 50% of children with Down syndrome have congenital heart disease? So this need to be addressed. If your previous child had or has Down syndrome, which was diagnosed later, you know that the other one could be at risk. And with that comes congenital heart disease. There is another genetic condition, which is called Turner syndrome which affects females in that the spectrum includes congenital heart disease. So genetic makeup is one thing which you must always include in your prenatal checkup. If you are planning a pregnancy, you must need a genetic counselor and understand your and your husband's risk factors as far as your genetics is concerned. The second thing is maternity. Diabetes. The diabetes is a very silent killer. We all know that. We don't know our sugar levels unless we get them tested. Before you conceive, you must get your sugar levels and HbA1c test done to see that how your body insulin is. If your body insulin is abnormal, before you even think, before you even know that you have a baby in your womb, it would affect the genetic makeup of the baby's heart. Okay. 
is not gestational diabetes that affects the heart. Remember that. Diabetes which you develop in your pregnancy does not affect the heart. It's type 1 and type 2 diabetes which you need to correct beforehand. Okay. Third factor is alcohol. It results in fetal alcohol spectrum disorder which includes congenital defect. It can affect the baby's heart. There are certain conditions, infections like rubella or German measles, which remain silent in our bodies. But if they affect the unborn child and the mother having this infection, especially in first three months of pregnancy, similarly, like flu, influenza, this can, these two infections can affect baby's heart development. What can be done for this? vaccination for rubella is suggested for all women of childbearing age and influenza vaccine every year must be given. Rubella is given once and it protects um, us. But the most important thing is that if you are taking rubella vaccine for next four to eight weeks, you should not conceive. As simple as paints, nail polish remover, stuff like that, if taken if inhaled, can affect the development of the heart. Then there are medicines like acne medicines, isotretinoin, ibuprofen. A lot of patients come. I had a, I had headache and I took ibuprofen. And I said, okay, are you pregnant by any chance? Uh, no, doctor, I'm not sure, but maybe I've skipped my periods. Now, that's the problem you need to be careful about. If you're planning a pregnancy, please avoid taking ibuprofen or uh, consult your doctor for anti-seizure, epilepsy drugs, skin and um, acne problems. If you are taking any sort of medicine, you have to uh, stop that so that your body uh, is prepared for pregnancy. So some that things that we can... Yeah, that's a very, very comprehensive uh, information and, and red flags or a uh, way to uh, navigate as far as when you're looking at the conception stage, uh, Dr. Glossy. But uh, now let me bring with the aspect of, you know, when uh, a woman is has conceived, you know, the first thing you hear or is probably the heartbeat of your child. Um, so when does really the screening focuses on the child's heartbeat and when is the CHD most likely uh, to be diagnosed uh, in, in the process? Uh, so as soon as you conceive, the first thing, as you have uh, rightly said, Priyal, is the baby's heartbeat and everybody wants to listen to that. And I have the, the feeling of, uh, you know, the excitement. I can feel that. Uh, having said that, it is very, very important to understand that your doctor who's, uh, who's doing the scan is uh, well uh, trained for the same. Because as simple as starting from five weeks to six weeks of pregnancy, when it begins, the mm -hmm. heartbeat we have to check the heart rate and the rhythm. At that stage, we cannot see the fetal heart development or mm -hmm. CHD, but we can definitely rule out arrhythmias. We can definitely rule out if the heart is developing healthily or not. That, that health of the heart can be checked. At all stages, the heart rate of the fetus has to be between 120 to 180 beats per minute, and the rhythm has to be regular. If that is there, then we know that the heart development is going in a right direction, and the pregnancy is developing perfect. Uh, if we talk about the structure of the heart, so there are two ways. One is the function of the heart and the structure of the heart. As early as 14 weeks, we can see the chambers of the heart being formed. We all know there are four chambers of the heart. Their development starts as early as eight weeks. But for us to see it on an ultrasound, which are um, high frequency sound waves, and they're absolutely safe for uh, pregnancy ultrasounds. So we um, assess that about 14 weeks onwards. In about 20 weeks, when we are doing a detailed structural ultrasound from head to toe, we are looking at the fetus heart even in further detail. Mm -hmm. However, as the pregnancy progresses, we do a fetal echocardiogram in about 22 to 24 weeks when the heart is further two to three centimeters and we can even assess mind effects apart from, of course, the major ones. As far as the fetal uh, echocardiogram is concerned, which is the definitive way of finding out uh, about a CHD, as I understand. Um, is that a regular practice? 
that is that something that you that sort of evolves or is is sort of recommended once you know that there are underlying condition that could probably lead uh, to a probability of chd and so therefore fetal echocardiogram is important you know priyal i have been asked this question in so many forums and almost every other day with my patients that is it a norm should i go for it my doc says no my some doc says no my some says yes congenital heart disease one has to understand accounts for one third of all congenital anomalies and is the leading cause of infant mortality due to birth defects before i say further it says it one third that's, that's such- because because i'm i'm stemming it from our conversation and i think for the viewers i have to mention this that when i was uh, pregnant uh, you know probably for whatever reasons my doctors did not advise me or suggest and i frankly i wasn't into uh, understanding or uh, or wanting to know what tests i need to do and all uh, that that discussion never happened you know whether it was my choice i was ne- i didn't even know a fetal echocardiogram existed uh, and i remember you telling me during that time and i didn't even register that how what is the significance of it what is the importance of it uh, until after my delivery when uh, i got to know my child has chd and the very crucial fetal fetal echocardiogram uh, which was uh, which was something that would have revealed was not done in my case i would also like to point point out uh, to the viewers and also uh, importantly taking forward a question dr glossy is that uh, you know when thereafter i moved to different uh, country uh, you know i went to america and all of that because i conceived at the age of 35 where i am as it is categorized as a high risk pregnancy and whether yes. in europe that i am currently in uh, it's a very standard uh, protocol that if you are under if you are 35 and above you are a hi- high risk pregnancy and therefore fetal echocardiogram is a must is something that is uh, that is to be done uh, but i believe that that's still not a a prerogative here and the biggest challenge as far as chd that we have also uh, personally seen is the screening and the diagnosis and timely diagnosis changes a lot as most of the uh, pediatric cardiologists point out absolutely you're absolutely right priyal and that is where the whole um, complexity of the problem comes that the mother suffers the family suffers the child suffers uh, we have to have a middle path in it doctor and that's what i tell all my trainees where you think and in india we are fortunate that we can have our independent decision um because i have studied in cleveland clinic and we know we have protocols there which we cannot skip uh but here in india if i feel i can tell my patient that this is an important test and i can call up the gynecologist that listen this test is important and we must do do we have uh the uh, ability at this time uh, as far as detection of most chd is concerned uh, is there a scope of missing it as well despite the fetal echogram or is there also a room for error uh see priyal there is always you know when whenever we are doing ultrasounds uh, it is in in fact at the bottom of the report it is written that all congenital anomalies cannot be ruled out because there are multiple factors mother's habitus baby's position doctor's ability doctor's training equipment the study the technique that you follow there are so many things that had to be your diagnostic test your diagnostic center you check the ability of the doctor the qualification uh how does an early diagnosis during the pregnancy change as far as chd is concerned um see when you are diagnosing the chd there are three things in it again firstly before conception we know that the risk factors we have taken care of during pregnancy usually the fetus has a very protective environment to thrive and to grow despite he or she having a congenital heart disease mm-hmm. usually it fails through because the maternal support is so much that the fetal heart is okay to go the problem happens after the birth mm-hmm. so during pregnancy there is 
there are very few cases where we actually do cardiac catheterization or anything to take care of the fetal heart. It right, mostly, during the pregnancy. During the pregnancy. And that is a possibility. Uh, I mean, in a, I'm, I would assume it would be a very extreme scenario. But is that a possibility, uh, A, and B, uh, are we in India equipped to do it? Absolutely, we are equipped to do that. There is a possibility. Firstly, when a patient comes for fetal echo, if there is an abnormality, then it is graded. Okay, it is compatible with life or not compatible with life. Now, as simple as a hole in the heart, what we call as a ventral or an uh, ventricular or an atrial septal defect. That and which is one of the most common ones, the intervention happens after delivery. Now, what is the point of doing fetal echo if it is minor and majority of the cases are minor then what is the point of doing it the point is that when the baby comes during delivery the pediatrician has to have that um, level of training to handle a fetus a newborn with VST should be able to do a physical examination should be able to do a uh, uh, stethoscope examination and if needed if suspected clinically um, due to by looking at the fetus at the child that okay my uh, uh, baby is born and has got uh, some bluish tinge or something that the doctor has noticed then the further trail of tests begin and as early uh, one can catch this problem early intervention can prevent disability later uh, in life. Dr. Glossy, thank you so much for uh, joining us today, for helping us uh, create that awareness. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining.